What sets Jujutsu Kaisen apart from other anime? We're going to explore some of my favorite cuts from the latest season and unravel their production secrets. <laughs> but not for free. I'm charging a one-time fee of one like, sub, or comment on this video. Done? Alright, alright, I'll play. Because of the sheer number of high quality cuts, I've opted to show only a few for this breakdown, and I'll have to cover the others in another video, but I still think we can learn quite a lot here. The first scene I'd like to analyze is by Keiichiro Watanabe. The effects that he animates surely play a large part in why this looks so good, but what we're more interested in here is how he creates cohesion between the shots. There's a recurring clockwise motion in this segment that helps to guide your eye. I'll annotate a bit to make it more clear. In this first shot, there is a 3D animated background rotating in the clockwise direction. To convincingly integrate the character, they are drawn with foreshortening to help imply depth, and they rotate with the camera. The light from the effects are bright, so it's important to maintain strong posing for a readable silhouette. What's most interesting here though, is that the blue that the character is manipulating does not actually move in screen space. It remains in the top left of the frame for the entirety of the shot. The motion is instead implied by the camera work and the inconsistency of the debris moving around the effect helped to mask this lack of real screen movement. To ease on the eyes a little, the next shot instead has almost no camera movement. The previous motion is implied by the movement of the blue blast, and then the blast is given strength by this sudden burst of dust effects. Again, note the strong posing of the silhouette. If you want to make good animation, always have strong silhouettes. They are the first thing your eye subconsciously notices, and are one of the biggest steps towards making stronger work. This dust continues on into the next shot, now assuming the same clockwise motion that the blue blast once made. Keeping this motion throughout this portion allows the scene to maintain consistency, makes it easily trackable by the eye, and helps with the illusion of depth. Almost all of the dust is drawn with one color in relatively consistent width, so by maintaining the same motion that the blast and 3D background created earlier, your brain remembers this illusion and reapplies it subconsciously. The scene is capped off by this final shot that implies continuation of the same clockwise motion using three layers of effects work to imply depth. The two foreground layers move to screen left, while the background layer moves towards screen right. Neither of these directions are technically clockwise, however, due to the placement of the scene chronologically, it still gives this effect. Effects work in and of itself is a fascinating topic, and the shape language in use here is beautiful, so I'd love to dive into it more when I have more time. Sadly though, that's all the time I have for this scene in this video, so we'll have to move on. I would, however, like to point out the brilliant effects of animator Tam Lu while we're closing out this topic. A 3D rotation like this is hard to pull off with 2D drawings, and this water ripple effect is quite fascinating as well. I partly believe that why this looks so good is the inconsistency between each drawing. It really helps to sell the idea that this is imaginary, drawn like liquid, rather than a more tangible or physical environment. The contrast of the red and blue is also quite appealing and lends itself well to the idea of the convergence that creates purple. The release for this next section had some dimming issues on air, so we'll be looking at the Ginga instead. The cut of Maharaga's regeneration was created by an animator called Sausalot, and the Sukuna portion was made by Mr. Vincent Chansard. The walk cycle for Maharaga is intimidating. He walks with a wide stance and does not stop once despite the onslaught of attacks. The gaps in his body that continuously disappear and reappear create interesting use of positive and negative space, but due to the temporary Ginga colors, this is made more noticeable in the final composite. It is animated on ones, likely due to how the animator chose to incorporate the regeneration aspect of the character. The effects work of the slashes, while at an initial glance look complicated, are actually a clever trick. The artist grabs a custom brush, quickly makes a stroke, and continues onward for however many frames they want that layer to move. They don't need to be very detailed, because once so many of them are created, they instead create the illusion of detail. There is also a tool in Clip Studio Paint called the Lasso Fill Tool that was likely used as well. This tool can create interesting splotches of color in no time, and appears to have been used on at least one slash layer as well as some wind and dust. I've made a quick time lapse on how a shot like this could be quickly constructed, plus animating a walk cycle of course. I hope you find it interesting.
a walk cycle and a little bit of compositing magic, this would look pretty good. Now let's talk about Sukuna. This cut is simple in execution, yet much more complex than you'd think. Mr. Chansard is a master of creating 3D volumes on a 2D image. Sukuna is drawn with deceivingly simple shapes, but the roundness of the edges and shading combined with an immaculate grasp of anatomy makes drawings like these very difficult to replicate. The slashes are drawn with straight lines rather than custom brushes and random strokes like before, and there is debris and dust that have been tweened rather than redrawn. Sukuna's outfit is drawn with an 11 frame loop, and the hair is on a 7 frame loop. The changes in facial expressions and foreground hand redraws help to hide this, and the constant movement of the slashes aid this task as well. But I feel like the real magic here is in the way that the artist conveys weight. As the hands move, they don't feel like they're sliding from one position to another. The organic arcs used, and the way that the hands gain and lose momentum in a way that aligns with reality ground the scene in a way that feels realistic. In order to give the feeling of power and energy, the hands shake to and fro, and heat is built between them. Deceptively simple concepts with deceptively complex execution. The understanding of motion necessary to make a scene like this feel grounded with such a limited frame rate due to the deadlines of the production absolutely blew me away. And this was one of Chansard's simplest cuts for the episode. For the sake of speeding this video along, as well as not being too repetitive, I'll do one last cut. This shot, animated by Kiri Lu, looks stunning for very similar reasons. The hands are drawn spectacularly, and I love the use of 3D volumes, but for the sake of better compartmentalizing the video, we'll talk about other aspects. Sukuna is almost entirely obstructed by this extremely dark shadow, entirely black. You can hardly even see his smile, and his other facial features are entirely non-existent. This, with the bright red background directly contrasting it, give a very menacing appearance to the character. The shot lasts for quite long, giving a sense of drama to this motion, and the positive and negative space within the shot are roughly 50-50, perfectly balanced. There are also very unique and stylized shapes drawn in a faint red color over the facial region. I've not seen this done in this manner before, so it gives the shot quite nice artistic flair. The reveal of the overly detailed teeth from toward the end of the shot gives Sukuna a powerful feeling, and all of these elements combined create a very memorable image. It feels powerful, grandiose, terrifying. I would win. In my previous video about Demon Slayer's production, I had a speed up segment at the end highlighting the importance of the compositing step. A composite artist's job is to take the flat version of the scene and to combine and enhance the elements to create the final product. You can almost think of it like VFX, but for animation. With that said, let's show how the composite artist for this show could have done a similar thing. Enjoy. I actually forgot to render this image, so I had to upscale a screenshot from the time lapse. <laughs> My bad. For the sake of context, this composite process was sped up by roughly 5,000%. This took me about 43 minutes to composite, and this entire process would have to be replicated for every single shot during production. Jujutsu Kaisen's compositing process is quite a bit simpler for me to replicate compared to the Demon Slayer composite, so it wasn't too rough. If you want to see a more in-depth shot, check out the time-lapse in that video. There are plenty of other shots that I can go over for this season of Jujutsu Kaisen, so if this video gets good reception, I'd love to do more videos on it, just like this one. Also, be sure to comment other anime that you'd like me to go over, or other animators that you'd like me to check out. If you're interested in learning to composite, I've started creating some YouTube shorts to give some helpful tidbits of information. Check that out and let me know what else you'd like me to cover. Thank you for taking the time to check out this video, and I really appreciate your time. Have a good one.
check you next time.